Okay, good afternoon, Lucy. Good afternoon, Ricky. Thanks very much for taking part in this careers interview. So you are a digital business analyst for Northamptonshire County Council. What does that mean? So um, a digital business analyst is a professional who will um, go out to customers. They could be members of the public. They could be um, internal members of a service. So in my case, services within Northamptonshire County Council, um, adult social services, for example, or the waste management services. Um, and as a business analyst, I will work with that service um, or user to kind of understand areas of a process they might work within um, that might have issues or um, perhaps old old methods of working in that they're kind of finding quite tricky to carry out in, in this kind of day and age with the technology um, and kind of figuring out and solutionizing um, some sort of new ways of working for them and then we we work to figure out the best way to implement those ideas um, get them out there and then monitor that to see sort of how that new process is working for them brilliant could you give us an example of um, a couple of things a couple of projects that you've worked on so we people can visualize what that actually is that you do? Yeah, definitely. So um, one sort of standout project that I can think of is I worked um, sort of as a lone BA with the school non-attendance service. Um, so the school non-attendance process was um, giving out fines to parents who have maybe taken their child out of school during the term time. Um, and some of the issues that they kind of um, raised with me was around their sort of income generation and the fact that the current process included an online form where the parent would enter their fine amount. So it was £60 for um, a fine between the first day of it being issued and the 20th day. Um, and then after the 20th day, it was £120. And there was actually a loophole within the form which allowed parents to only press £60. And obviously, if you're given a choice to pay £60 or £120, you're going to pick the lower price. So. Um, there was an error there that they found that a lot of people were picking £60 and not, not being sort of truth and honest about that. Um, so I worked with them to kind of figure out with um, some local developers within NCC, local IT developers, we worked out um, a way to solutionise that and fix that issue. And now the new process still includes an online form, very customer friendly online form, um, which allows the customer to enter their reference number and it tells them how much they need to pay. It doesn't allow them to select how much they want to pay. So um, I've received quite a bit of feedback from the service since we've implemented that process. And it's, it's been sort of all 100% positive really in that customers are being told to pay a certain amount and then they're going ahead and doing that. Okay, great. So you work with services then to identify what problems they might have um, and try and solve those problems with online website solutions. Yes, yeah. Which I guess in this case allows the public to um, to, to transact with the council and um, use our services. Yeah, yeah. The, I think the idea is that obviously with things like a school non-attendance penalty fine, I don't think you want a customer to spend you know hours and hours trying to figure out how to get through the transaction. You want it to be simple, smooth. Obviously, it's a it's a compulsory thing, a statutory thing they have to pay for, um, and you don't want them coming out at the end of that transaction feeling, you know, um, like it's taken them a really long time to do. So we need to make it as, as quick and easy for them, and then as quick and easy for the service behind it to d deal with those. Okay, thank you. So we'll come on to um, a little bit more about your career and the business analyst role and the kind of work that you do, how you got into that in a, in a short time. But going back a little bit, which school did you go to? Um, so I went to Spon School, which is based in Toaster, so South North Vance, a really reputable school. Um, and I stayed on after my GCSE years um, at their sixth form. So I stayed on for an extra two years um, as opposed to going to college. Did you enjoy it? Definitely, definitely. I really enjoyed, um, I'm sure a lot of people would say, the social aspect of school. Um, I've made lots of really good friends there that I'm you know, still in contact with now. Um, the education, the curriculum, that sort of thing, the way they get you involved in the lessons is, is you know, second to none. Um, and I had a really good experience there, education-wise, social, social side as well. Was there any um, specific IT or digital interests or subjects that you did at school? Um, so when I carried on at sixth form, I stayed and took the... Um, 
IT Cambridge Technicals course. So I didn't want to sort of hold myself down to a full, um, I suppose, A-level course. I wanted to kind of get a bit of a flavour of, um, of everything kind of IT based. And that was what the Cambridge Technical course was. was. Um, when I first chose my options, you kind of have to read up a little bit about what the options can offer you. And I kind of found that the straight IT A-level course was very technical based and I, I felt like I didn't quite fit into that and that the Cambridge Technicals one had a bit more of a design element to it um, and that was something that kind of attracted me a bit more towards it so yeah I, I took the um, the Cambridge Technicals course in my A level year. Okay did you have any work experience in your time at school? Yeah so in year 10 so we're thinking back to before my GCSEs uh, it was actually a compulsory thing that all year 10 students had to do two weeks of work experience. I'd probably say it's the, the best thing a, the school could do for us really was, was to make that compulsory um, because I've, I've been in touch with a couple of schools in the last few years and I mentioned work experience and they've actually said that it's not something that they make the children do or say, say the children need to do it. Um, so I was actually in contact with yourself so uh, the manager of the web and, web and digital team at the council uh, and I did my two weeks work experience here in the in the same team I work in now so I'm sure you can tell how much of an influence it had on me um, and I worked with someone in the team at the time called Lawrence who actually showed me the rope showed me how you know designing a website it, it sort of entails and, and the user needs around it and kind of gathering those user needs making mock-up designs of the websites, um, using really simple tools like Microsoft PowerPoint. And you know, once you start moving text boxes and things around, you can really make it look visually like a website. Um, so I worked with Lawrence. Um, we also got to visit um, an outdoor learning center. So the, the website that I was helping to design was actually for the outdoor learning services at the time. Um, and I got to visit Grendon Outdoor Learning Center with Lawrence. Um, I got to include some of my um, photography skills. I really enjoy photography. It's sort of an, a good pastime for me. Um, and we worked together to sort of get some get some new photos of the centre with some children getting involved in the activities to put up on the new website. Um, and then after my two weeks of work experience, I actually went back to um, Grendon to present the mock-ups to the service, um, which was really good experience because you kind of, you think back to school and how they used to get you to present you know your presentation at the end of the lesson it was a really quick two or three minute presentation on i don't know trees or something really basic and, and you then you're able to use those skills that you've learned of presenting in you know these these sort of workplace type scenarios so um yeah it was absolutely brilliant work experience and something that i really try and sort of mention when i can um to anyone in like a school environment brilliant so at school as well, did you have any kind of part-time job? Yeah, so I first started working as a waitress um, in a local pub and then carried that on and worked in events management within uh, Whittlebury Hall, which was sort of a similar role. I was still um, working as a waitress, but kind of helping out with um, managing, you know, bigger events like weddings and things like that. In order to do that, obviously you have to be quite professional. Um, you have to make sure that you're there on time. Um, in order to be ready, have everything ready for like when the bride arrives and things like that. Um, so yeah, quite a varied role from initially working as, I guess, a pot wash really, as, and then to a waitress at the White Horse, and then to working sort of all, all weekend at events like the Silverstone GP racing and things like that. Um, really important, I think, as well as work experience is having things like a part-time job because you know, gives you that element of confidence, being able to speak to people you've never met before. It was never something that I'd imagined I'd be doing at the age of, you know, 16, 17, is, is working for a whole, you know, wedding party, trying to understand, like, their needs, what they want, you know, at different parts of the day. So, yeah, I, uh, I was a part-time worker from about 15. <laughs> Did you have any um, any kind of mentors at school that influenced you? I guess you might not have called them mentors at school, but senior people that um, that helped you or guided you? Yeah, so um, every year had a head of year, um, and mine was a head of year called Mr. Court, um, and he played quite a, a vital role, I think, in every 
student in my year actually in that he would you know monitor how everyone's getting on um, often he sort of pull you out of a classroom maybe have a quick one-to-one -one, just see how you're getting on not to pull you out and to tell you off or anything like that it was more to you know talk about how you're getting on especially coming up to things like GCSE years and and stuff like that it was majorly important to kind of keep in touch with um, an adult and kind of talk to each other on that adult level you know he never spoke to you as if you were you know some year seven child who you know just joined and didn't know what you were doing he talked to you in a really professional way so um, yeah I would kind of call him a mentor really and that he was also a, a teacher you know he was a history teacher he taught me um, in GCSE history um, and he just taught taught everyone life lessons as well he told assemblies and things like that um, talking about really crucial things um, interview preparations and stuff like that I can remember there being meetings and assemblies about that so um, yes very that played a very key part I think in my school years great so when you were leaving school did you have any thoughts about going to uni um, I think when I was coming towards the end of sixth form I was kind of getting the idea that I wasn't quite um, I didn't find that I was really enjoying that element of assignments and things like that I think I at that point realized that I liked learning on the job um, I think that's why I enjoyed working in you know these part-time roles so much is because you got to do something and then there was an outcome at the end and if it was a positive outcome it kind of makes you feel better about yourself you know you've, you've helped a wedding and then maybe at the end of the night they give you a tip or something like that you know things like that where it has a positive outcome um, I think I found that I never used to get that same feeling just for me where if I you know wrote an assignment you know you'd get a B or something like that you'd, you'd get a good grade at the end of it but it wasn't quite the same feeling so I kind of got that idea that I wanted to go into maybe an apprenticeship role or something like that where I knew I could kind of get a qualification out at the end of it but also actually learn on the job and kind of get an idea of a real working environment rather than kind of visiting the library and, and you know writing all of these essays and assignments to, to come out with a qualification at the end um, obviously that's like a personal choice but I think after so many years of being at school and being in that same environment I just wanted to, to break out of that really and, and go into something different. So at the end of school then what, what did you do next? So at the end of school um, I think I remember going to a um, an apprenticeships fair actually at Milton Keynes Film Centre. Um, it was really interesting and there was so much variety that I think when I went there I was so overwhelmed with the variety. Um, it kind of made me even more, I guess I'm sure I didn't know what kind of industry to go down. Um, so I remembered obviously my work experience and how um, how much value I actually got from that and how many people I'd met and how exciting it was that I decided to um, go back and email yourself, Richard, and I kind of asked, you know, have you got any apprenticeships going? At this point, I didn't think that I was even, I suppose, being fresh out of school, I didn't think I was even worthy of being in like a full-time employment role. I think I was more of that level that, oh, you know, I'll, I'll have to take the apprenticeship route because I won't be able to get into full-time employment, you know, because uh, I'm not qualified in anything. Um, but then you you told me that you were advertising for a website administration role um, and I just went for it really. I don't think I really hesitated. I think when I saw the email, I was kind of coming to the end of sixth form. I felt, I suppose, a bit of pressure to kind of get something. And I suppose it was almost like if I didn't go for it, it could have been a missed opportunity. So, um, yeah, I came for the interview. Um, very lucky that I got given the role. Um, and then four years later, here I am. I've had quite a, a bit of job progression, I would say, and, and now I'm taking part in this apprenticeship. So. Well, I think uh, we were definitely pleased when you applied for the job as the website administrator. I think the impact you made on us, I mean, that's the key, one of the key messages as an employer was it was just your enthusiasm, you know, and you were, even at 15, you were like work ready, you know, you were focused, professional, you didn't necessarily have all this, well, none of the skills, you know, a lot of the technical skills and things like that but very professional in the workplace and you know, that enthusiasm, that goes a long way. So when you came to apply for that, that job with us, um, you know, it was a no brainer for us that we wanted to hire someone like that in who's got the basic raw materials that we'd want and then you could learn on the job. So yeah, that was um, 
beneficial for, for both of us. So once you started, what, what was work like? What was the transition like from going to school every day to then working full time? I think I, I, I feel like I slotted in quite nicely. I think I'm, I adapted quite well to that working life of, you know, obviously I kept the same routine of having to get up quite early, getting into work and then leaving around the same sort of time as, as you would for school really. That, that type of it, that side of it didn't really change. Um, I guess it was more once you got into the workplace, what the work you were given was and the fact that you had to manage your own time, um, you know, you had to manage your own workload. It wasn't a case of you'd be given some homework to do. That was kind of your own workload. You had to manage, you had to get your homework in time when you were at school. Um, but everything was kind of planned by your teacher. Whereas this side of things, when you're in the workplace, you're asked to do a job, you do it in the way that you think is best. And then you kind of hand it back and say, here it is, it's done. Um, and then they kind of they accept it or they kind of criticize it and things. So I think I slotted in quite well. You know, the team that's still still here today is, is they they brought me in as if they, I, I was one of their own really. And I really did feel at home, um, I suppose as well. The work experience helped because I saw some familiar faces in the team. So yeah, that definitely helped me. Um, having those connections built up already was really good. So what was it like then going, you know, from school, you've got all kids your own age into work where, you know, majority of people are going to be older than you, in some cases, a lot older than you. How was that? I suppose back then it was, I felt like it was quite daunting um, in that obviously when you see a, a, a young face, you don't kind of assign, you know, experience, understanding to that person. You kind of think that they're there perhaps on work experience and that they don't actually know kind of the the background of the organization and I think that's kind of how I felt to start with um, but then once you kind of understand the working culture and you understand and get to know people in certain areas of, of the organization I kind of um, I suppose alongside that obviously with the learning I've taken from the web team going into things like meetings um, with other members of the team and then having my own say and, and adding my own comments I kind of felt like I was impressing or, or other people in the meeting room were kind of, you know, taken aback by some of the things that I'd learned. So maybe at the very beginning, I was, I was maybe quite daunted by the idea of having to lead my own meetings and things like that eventually. Um, but I suppose as time's gone on um, and as I've kind of met new people and, and understand where, understood where they're from and what area they work in, I've got quite an in-depth understanding now of, of the local government and of, of the organisation as a whole. So obviously the council, you know, it's a really big organisation. The buildings that we work in are very big. What, what was that like to work in such a, you know, a big organisation? Was that daunting? I think so. I would say at the start, um, like I said, there, there were so many people, so many service areas that I'd never even heard of. You know, I, I didn't know things like Northamptonshire had country parks that were listed under Northamptonshire County Council, just really... Thing, minor things like that I had no you know awareness of when I was at school um, I didn't know who took the bins out and, and you know who collected the bins and did things like that and and now you know if someone mentions to me oh my bins not been collected I go back to them with them well that's not that's not our organization that's a different one so I can get quite smart with it now because I feel like I've learned so much over the last few years um, but yeah the the building like in the actual size it's absolutely massive but i actually feel like i can kind of brag about that a little bit i suppose when people say you know where do you work i'm like well you know I work in the center of town it's such a, a hub of, of movement and there's so many people working in so many different parts that um you know you can talk about it for ages so yeah i suppose at the start quite daunting quite big for someone who's you know so small and only just starting out but um yeah you kind of you, you weave yourself into it and you kind of understand it more so in those first um, dig digital roles that you've got, what are some of the skills that you learned in that role? So some of the, I suppose, major skills that I learned was, one of them was definitely around presentation skills. I think, like I've mentioned, that the presentation skills that you were taught at school were, were very basic, but those kind of building block skills actually helped me during this role in, in that, I took drama, um, not because I wanted to perform and, and, you know, go to drama school and do all of that. It was more for my confidence levels. And I wanted to kind of bring myself out a bit so that if I 
we're in a situation like presenting in a meeting, you know, I can throw my voice bar back into the room and things like that. Um, they've actually, it's, I've kind of applied and, and learned that, you know, being loud makes people hear you and that therefore you don't have to keep repeating yourself and people understand you better and things like that. Um, I'd probably say another skill that I've learned is my management skills. So like I said earlier about uh, managing your own time and making sure work's been handed in on time and things like that. Um, you know, when, in my role now, I'm having to manage things like go live dates um, of, of systems, process updates and stuff like that. They all have to go live on a certain day. Um, and in order for everyone to know that, you know, you have to email everyone or you have to make sure everyone's in the loop. Um, they're all up to date. They're just like, they're very basic, um, I suppose, administration put like tasks but once you actually have them sort of in your in your mind as as skills they're um, they're really useful um, so yeah presentation skills are massive um, management skills and then just one final one around communication um, I think kind of ties in with with that confidence level of being feeling confident enough to just walk up to somebody and, and having that like brief five minute chat about something um, I think back when I was 15 14, 15, I probably wouldn't have even dared to have gone up to somebody and just said, oh, you know, I've, you know, I've read your email, but I won't be able to get back to you until such and such a time. Um, I'd probably just leave it. But now I've, you know, I've, I've built that confidence level up. Um, I can communicate easily with people. So. so in terms of other skills, thinking of it as a digital role, people probably think well, it's a very technical role. Are there any technical skills, thinking of software that you might use uh, that you've had to learn how to use those? Yeah, um, and I think a lot of them these days can be quite um, self-explanatory, which I guess is quite helpful. Um, so, for example, there's a piece of technology called Trello um, that I use day to day. It's like a project management type um, program that allows you to kind of block out elements of a project and kind of put it in what's to do. What It's almost like a to do list, really. Um, you kind of mark out what there is to do, what there is that you're working on, what's been done, things like that. Um, and we use it within the team and also um, wider than that, I think other people use it for projects um, that I've been involved in. And it's just so easy to kind of understand just from a visual point of view, like you look at the board and immediately you can see this is the stuff that I've got on, this is the stuff that someone else has got on. So um, that's a, I think that plays quite a key part actually in my day to day role, um, Trello. Things like Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, all those things that you learned to use in school um, have played a massive role in, in my day to day job as well. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly as a BA, um, one of the elements that you're sort of expected to be able to add to is something is a document called a business case. Um, and that's where you kind of you write up about why you think this process needs to be changed and the benefits of it and the costs of changing this process. Um, so business case writing, document writing, sort of report writing, all of those elements, being able to use Microsoft Word in, in a clear way that makes the document look good, read well, that sort of thing. Um, they're, yeah, software tools that, you know, I use every single day, really. So can you talk a little bit about your progression in your role then? You started as a website administrator. How did you progress from there? Um, so when I first joined as a website administrator, um, I think I was lucky enough to be able to have opportunities of um, kind of getting a taster of all of the roles within the web team, um, which kind of benefited me because I was then able to look at each of those roles and kind of decide which one do I fit in best. Um, and so once I became a website administrator, I probably stayed in that role for about a year. Um, and then I came into the digital improvement officer role, uh, which was based around the fact that I was pretty much managing um, the part of the web team, which was around the online transactions. Uh, so the online transactions surround the online forms platform that we use. Um, I was involved, I'm involved in building the online forms. I'm involved in communicating with the services around their online forms you know, when they want to make amendments, when they want to bring in new forms, that sort of thing. Um, that role then led me into being a digital experience designer as well. So they're very similar, um, but they're just like the, just even the role names themselves, they're, they're interesting, they kind of pull you in, you want to kind of learn more about, about that. Um, 
and just that whole online forms transaction role in, in itself needs you know two or three people to manage because we have over 200 online transactions from um, you know an adult safeguarding referral to um, I don't know leaving bits you know feedback on on the household waste and recycling center that you visited things like that they just really help the customers experience because they can leave you know leave feedback at two o'clock in the morning because that service is available online um, so I suppose being part of that part of the web team um, gives me such a, a good feeling because I'm, I'm creating that positive outcome for those customers so um, that was sort of yeah the digital experience designer and the um, digital improvement officer area and now I'm into my digital business analyst which obviously kind of ties in still with all the online forms work that I do um, but now looking out, outside of the web team box at, at the other service areas within the organization. I think, yeah, talking about your progression, I think what that's another key advice point I would make is, you know, when you're working somewhere, always try and work at the next level. You know, you might not be, you weren't getting paid to work at an experienced designer level or a business analyst level, but that kind of work was given to you and you were doing it. And because you just took to it, could do it well, when opportunities arose in the team, you know, you promoted to that level. So that's always a key piece of advice. I, that was advice that was given to me as well. Always try and work up to a higher level, even if it's not in your job spec. Don't moan about it. Put your hand up for new things, because if you show that willingness and that enthusiasm, they're the things that make all the difference in the workplace. People want to hire people, and work with people who are enthusiastic and want to do things. So, yeah, that was a major thing I think we, um, we all noticed from, from you being here. So could you talk about some of your other projects then, any, from any of your roles that you've had? I know you've, you've built websites, designed websites, the user research on websites, um, new systems that you've put in, new forms that you've built. Is there anything, anything you've particularly enjoyed that you would like to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the key ones that I can always think back to, um, and I suppose kind of links in with my work experience. Um, so maybe a year into when I joined the web team um, as a full time member, uh, I joined two other team members and we actually worked on the online the outdoor learning centre project a second time. Um, so I worked back in 2016 and then we looked at them again in, I think, 2017 or 2018 um, to revamp the websites and make them even more user friendly than they were um, because we have moved on to a new um, CMS system or, or website platform. Um, we had to revamp these websites so that they could sit on this new system. Um, and one of the major things that came out of that was we were actually able to visit all three of the outdoor learning centres. So at the time that was obviously Grendon. Um, Longtown, which is sort of on the border of Wales, um, and then Everton, uh, which was a good um, flashback, I suppose, because I, I visited Everton when I was maybe eight or nine, um, and seeing the difference in size, I used to think it was absolutely massive. And then when you go in as a, you know, a 19-year-old, it's actually quite small. So um, it's yeah, it's quite an it was quite an eye opener and a, a really good project overall because we were able to really get involved. Um, with you know the activities that the children got to do at the outdoor learning centres, um, I got to take my camera with me. I took some photos for the websites, um, and they were obviously amazing settings. Long Town being you know in in the Brecon Beacons, and it it was just such a great experience. Um, and I think we got quite a lot out of it as a team. Um, the websites looked great. It was a really really good project. Um, another project I can think of is a, a recent one. So obviously with obviously the situation that's happening at the minute, um, we had to think of quite quick, fast paced solutions that would help, um, you know, our customers, but also our internal services on, on helping members of the public with, with the pandemic that's currently happening. Um, and my role within that was to create an online form or an online transaction um, for people to submit that they'd like to help and volunteer. Um, and support those that you know were, were having to shield um, and one of those things one of the one part of that project was to actually create almost like a directory um, of everyone that wanted to volunteer to then make it easy for our internal services you know if someone calls and says i need help with my shopping open the directory find someone who said i can help with shopping and then assign them to that person and you know the the, the process is completed then they're not having to file through spreadsheets and spreadsheets or, or individual documents to find someone's number or someone's email address to then contact them. It was a really quick process that we implemented quite quickly as well, obviously, with the given situation. So 
yeah, that was a really, I think, had a really good impact um, on the team because it made them recognise, I suppose, for the work that we put in such a short amount of time. I think people might be interested, though, even though you're in a web team, it's a digital role, you know, it doesn't, all these skills that you've talked about are kind of maybe what we call the softer skills. They're not really like, they're not programming skills or really techie skills. It sounds very customer focused, understanding the business, um, how things work, and then translating that to, to online, what customers will use online. So having an understanding of the business seems to be a really key part of what you do. Definitely. I think as a BA, it's almost like an expectation that you're supposed to have almost just like a basic knowledge of English because if you take what a developer um, would call a website, so what I said earlier, a CMS system, I then have to translate that to other people that might not understand what a CMS system is. So it's having that um, understanding that if something technical comes out of one person, you need to then translate that um, and explain it in a clearer way to someone else, just so that things don't get confused because if they understand CMS as you know a, a different abbreviation for example they might give you a different answer than you were actually expecting so um, yeah definitely not a technical role as such but it's obviously good to have some sort of technical idea. Would you class yourself as a techie? I wouldn't say so no I think I would say more that I tend to use my initiative if something comes up that I'm not aware of so if I'm working on the computer um, and, you know, I'm trying to do something new and I can't quite understand it. My first thought would be to use Google, which seems very straightforward, but it's really helpful in that I don't know whether it's because I don't actually like asking for help as a first, you know, first step. But I think it's always good um, as a first step to look yourself, have a little read on, you know, some forums and kind of get an idea. If people are saying loads of different things, then obviously you need to find someone who's technically experienced in that area um, but I think if you give it a go first kind of see if you can learn for yourself um, self-teaching I kind of I'm quite a big advocate for there's a couple of things I have self self-taught myself um, photography being one of them you know getting guides and things like that to kind of follow first before you start joining training courses and things like that um, but yeah I don't think I'd class myself as a hard techie there are some technical elements probably I've learned on the job um, but yeah, I don't necessarily think it's all down to having that technical experience. Yeah, I think that's a, another key point there. I think that self-learning, technology changes so quick, you know, you're just expected to learn it yourself. So, you know, going to Google, just having the confidence to open up new software, whether it's, you know, Adobe or some web design software, whatever it is, and just learning yourself how to do it. You know, I think that is really key. Maybe, you know, like myself, I would always ask someone, how do you do this? But things are changing so quick. You can't keep asking other people. You've got to learn yourself and find out how to do it. You know, one day you might be learning Google Analytics and how to use that and find out who's using the website or using Zoom software like this. So having that approach to learning, um, I think is really key in teaching yourself. So that kind of, that leads on to, you know, people call CPD, continuous professional development, um, all about learning basically. You know, once you finish school, or you go and do an apprenticeship or a degree, you might think the learning's over, but almost when you're in a job, the learning, you just never stops. You're always learning something new. So how, is, how, is, how important is that for your role, that continuous learning? Uh, and, and what are you learning at the minute? Definitely. I mean, it's, it's really important. Personal development is such an important part of being in the workplace because you almost, like you've said just then about how things are changing so quickly, you kind of don't want to be left behind. Um, and I suppose it is sort of taking the initiative to go, oh, okay, something new's come about, maybe I should read about it, because you are technically kind of personally developing yourself, because you're getting more of an understanding in that new area. Um, but one of the things um, that I'm learning at the minute, I'm actually um, taking a, um, a level four apprenticeship in business analysis. Um, so I'm hoping to finish that towards the end of this year. Um, and I'm obviously hoping to pass that hopefully with a merit or a distinction. Um, which then kind of gives me that, um, I suppose, another a step or another backbone to being a qualified business analyst. Um, it kind of opens more doors for me then to um, other areas of, of the, of the organisation. You know, if they're looking for a business analyst, I can step in and say, I've got the qualifications for this. You know, what is it you need me to do? And I've already got an understanding of the services in the organisation. So it could be quite an easy step in for me there. Um, but yeah, apprenticeships, obviously, I've mentioned at the start, but when I finished school, it was something I wanted to do, and I'm still sort of sticking by it. 
there are elements of an apprenticeship where you will have to do um, you know coursework and, and written work and things like that but because it ties in with the learning that you do on the job it's so much easier to explain things then in your coursework and in your written work whereas i find that you know if i was all you know constantly writing things and and in a full university course i just feel like i wouldn't have that same inspiration to to write as much as i have for my apprenticeship so at the minute i'm finishing my portfolio side of things and um, that's basically just a document of all of my sort of top um projects that i've been working on recently uh, and then i'll have an interview with an assessor who will obviously have read the um, portfolio in, in, in full and then they'll kind of ask me questions about it so there I get my interview experience I'll be able to bring some of that in um, and then they'll kind of ask me further questions on some of the projects I've worked on um, and then hopefully after all of that I'll have completed all of my exams as well um, and I'll be fully fledged so yeah. So obviously you didn't join the council with an apprenticeship and then you gained lots of work experience here um, got yourself promoted but with the apprenticeship was that something that you felt was important, not just the learning, but to then get an accreditation once you're in work? I think so. I think it kind of, um, it's almost like it's proof then, I suppose, because although when you start talking to someone and you start reading off all of the knowledge that you have, that's, that's clearly proof that you know what you're talking about. Um, but I think just having that as a, an, an extra level, oh, I suppose, yeah, just an extra layer. I don't think saying I've got a qualification is all you need to do. I think if you show them what you can do, that's more important. Um, but that's kind of what I'm hoping to get at the end of this um, is a full full qualification I can add to my CV. Um, it's just an extra extra layer, really. Had our first question come in, so I won't save it till the end. Um, is there anything in terms of the career that you've had now, is there anything that you wish you'd had advice wise um, when you were at school that you think would have helped you in your career? Um, I think so. I, I feel like perhaps now that I'm taking this digital BA role, um, it might have been helpful. It's becoming more clear to me now that it might have been helpful to do um, the business studies GCSE course. Um, that was something that it just maybe wasn't sold to me. Um, back then, it didn't seem like something that was as exciting and could open doors to things like business analysis and more so digital business analysis. So actually combining the IT industry with the business industry, I literally had never heard of that before until I joined this organisation and actually worked here for a few years when I met some. Um, so I think maybe having more of an in-depth discussion during my options, um, sort of that, that Phase where you choose your options for GCSEs, but also maybe for sixth form as well, um, because I can I can probably empathise with students now that are having to choose their options for GCSE and sixth form. That sometimes it's difficult to choose what you actually want to do because maybe they don't fit in the right blocks, and maybe they don't um, they, may, they might overlap with something else you want to do. So um, I definitely think maybe having more chats with the teachers and and more kind of options evenings and things like that. Um, might be might be useful, but that's probably everything. Okay, thanks for that. It's just something if you're at school, people might not be aware of LinkedIn. Um, do you want to maybe just say what LinkedIn is and do you have a LinkedIn profile? And is that something that you think is important when you're in the workplace? I do have a LinkedIn profile. Um, I do think it's important to kind of get yourself out there. I see LinkedIn is um, so it's a platform that I see. It's basically like putting your CV online. Um, putting your CV online and kind of personalising it um, rather than it just being, you know, the, the static, basic looking document that you send out to employers when, when you're looking to find a job. It's kind of like a, an addition to that um, in that you can add um, posts. So it's like a professional Facebook, really, where you can add posts about work that you've been doing recently. Um, you know, people you've worked with can endorse certain skills that you have, um, which I found is really useful because I don't always, I'm not always the type of person that wants to blow my own trumpet and say, you know, I'm, I'm interested in photography and I've taken a few photos, but I know people that have endorsed a skill on my profile for photography. So it kind of, it then backs you up that people think, oh, Lucy's actually, you know, got some skills in that area. So um, I do, I think it's like a, a, a CV, but like an enhanced version of it and would definitely recommend that when you sort of start your professional career, even 
you know, being at school, you could create an account now and, and sort of add to it as you finish school so that, you know, future employers might have that idea of what you've been doing towards the end of your college or your sixth form or, you know, your GCSE years. So definitely think about starting that now. Um, but I think it's really helped not not only just, you know, advertising yourself to future employers, but making connections, just making, you know, professional connections, making new friends, things like that. It's been a really useful tool. So um, yes, my LinkedIn is Lucy Cox. I'm just going to plug it in there. <laughs> but yeah. Brilliant. I know here, you know, so many people work here that a lot of your connections on LinkedIn will be people that work um, for the County Council and you promote yourself through that if you're if you've done new projects or a presentation that you've done or something like this you know you'll put the odd post out and it spreads the word to that network who you know might not know some of the things that you're doing it kind of builds your profile within the organization as well doesn't it yeah definitely it's, it's almost like if people haven't got time i'm not going to walk around you know the organization and start talking to people while they're midway through their working day it's kind of like they can look at it after work and they'll go oh i didn't know that lucy would get involved in that so yeah really good for insight like that yeah great so in terms of future roles, is there anything that you're looking at, you're interested in, uh, in the workplace in terms of evolution to an, your next role? Um, for the future, um, I'm looking to get more involved in, so um, Northamptonshire County Council as an organisation will eventually, so by April next year, um, everything's going to be disaggregated into two new unitary authorities. So North Northamptonshire and West Northamptonshire are what will replace Northamptonshire County Council and the seven districts and boroughs that are also part of Northamptonshire. Um, and I think it's such a massive project. It would be such a shame for me to sort of take a step back and not get involved in that. So I think that for the future, that's something I'm really looking to get heavily involved in and kind of, you know, sticking in the web team, seeing what kind of work we'll get out of that. Um, because obviously there's a lot of web content on on our NCC website at the minute that we manage as a web team. So, um, and obviously, of course, the online transactions, what will happen with those? Um, will we need to duplicate? Things like that. There's, there's endless possibilities, endless answers. Um, so I'd love to get more involved with that. Um, and I suppose just sort of see where that leads me, see what connections that makes, because obviously now we're joining other web teams, they might know different people as well. So. Um, yeah, I think that's that's what the next year sort of leads me into, really. Okay. Is there anything that you, you don't enjoy about work or your job at the minute? I don't think so. I, I really, I honestly think that everything I do um, and have done, I've always benefited from it in some way. Even if I've had, you know, a negative experience in a meeting or something like that, it's kind of been a lesson for me instead. So I've not come out of a meeting you know, been really disgruntled by, or, you know, someone said something or it's not gone the way I've planned because, you know, we've got to book in another meeting because people started chatting about something else. I've always then learned from that as, okay, if people have changed the subject during your meeting and they started talking about their weekend, next, the next meeting I'll have, I'll say, right, this is the focus. We need to be professional. And, you know, it, it's always, everything's always a lesson. And I don't think really anything I've, I've ever been involved in. I've come out feeling really negative and make, make, you know, kept it negative. I've always tried to make it into a positive, so. Okay. If anyone has um, got any questions who's listening, please do pop them into the chat. I've got about another 10, 15 minutes left. Uh, you talked earlier about your confidence and how your confidence levels have, um, have raised in the rock. Could you give us any other examples of things that you do or have done because your confidence is higher? You talked about some presentations and things like that. Yeah, um, so in February this year, um, as part of so the organisation that um, sort of hosts our online forms platform, uh, they invited myself and some other members of the web team uh, to a sort of a presentation day that they were holding, which was basically just a day for um, other organisations, local government organisations to kind of showcase um, work that they've been doing um, or work they're currently doing and, you know, the, the planned outcome of that work. Um, and I was invited to present some of the work that we've done with our safeguarding process or our adult safeguarding referral process. Um, the online transaction that we had for that, it used to be quite static and um, sort of outdated. There are a lot of questions in there that 
either didn't collect the right information, um, weren't relevant to the audience that completed the transaction. So we then looked at that process with um, a project team. You know, there were other business analysts on that project with me. So I was kind of getting that experience from, from them, kind of understanding how they would work in, you know, to do this, to change this process. Um, and we've now gone live with um, a, a most, just a so much more improved process in that the questions are relevant, the data that the service get out of it helps them actually get to an answer. Whereas before it was very hazy, they didn't, you know, they'd have to go back to the customer and ask for more information, which then prolongs the process for them. Uh, and that was something that I presented on the day and I got quite a lot of good feedback from that. Um, and even that presentation, you know, I'd, I came out of that and I was commenting, you know, I, I came across as really shy and I was, I was really nervous. But then I've learned then that maybe there were elements of it that I hadn't practiced enough. So the next time if I have a presentation, practice more, there, there's, that's the answer. That's all I have to do is I need to practice it more and, and get the right terminology and things like that so people understand it. Um, but still, you know, I threw my voice to the back of the room. I tried to talk as loud as I could. Luckily, it came with a microphone, though, so that was a, a bonus. But yeah, no, it was it was a really good experience for me, um, and I'd like to do something like that again, just to kind of keep that present those presentation skills up. I think. Where was that presentation? Uh, that was at Nottinghamshire County Council. And how many people were in the room? Um, probably, I'd say maybe forty or fifty. I think were in that meeting room. So, um, so pretty, pretty daunting for anybody to do that, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, any advice you can give students listening to make themselves work ready? You talked about a couple of things in there, but any other standouts you think? To make themselves work ready. I would probably say that if, if there's an opportunity or if there's something you want to do, don't hesitate. I think just go for it. And if you, you know, if you're interested in technology or you know if I think one of the things I found with my work experience was I actually went to another interview um, for a different type of work experience which was around you know painting art murals because when I first looked into doing work experience I think like a lot of other students we were just trying to get a place somewhere we just we weren't I suppose we weren't educating ourselves enough of, as to what is out there um, and I think I first I, I saw one thing that was advertised and I, I just tried to go for that and and I'm glad I didn't actually do it because I, I know that that really wasn't a position for me. Um, so I think if there's something you definitely want to do, don't hesitate, go for it. But also in saying that if there are things you're not sure of, ask other people, you know, if you've got family that work in different types of organisations, ask people that they know, you know, it, even if it's not to then work in their organisation, they might know someone who, you know, they might have a friend that works in a specific organisation with that same subject that you're interested in. So just make sure you, you get the word out there. Start talking to people now um, whilst, you, you know, you've got so, you know, friends and family and stuff like that um, that can help you out. So, yeah. Is there anything else that you're really passionate about in terms of giving students advice about work, the workplace, busting a few myths? I'd probably say that it's not what I, I would say it's not what you'd expect. I think when I said earlier about how I slotted right in because it wasn't very different, you know, working wasn't very different to being at school, the, you know, the timings were the same. Obviously, that might not be the case for every role if people work over, you know, throughout the night and stuff like that. But it's that same premise of managing your own time and being your own person and, and things like that, that it, it don't, yeah, don't be put off by the fact that, you know, you're in full-time employment now, that, that's a scary thing. I, I really don't think it's anything to be scared of. You know, there are new opportunities out there for you. Once you finish university as well, I've got a lot of friends who have recently finished university and they're, you know, they're all finding employment now, they're all finding jobs. It's not something that you finish uni and then that's it, you can't find a job. It's it, it, it's just not like that. And where, whether you've got the connections and where you know people, they'll also be able to sort of help you find that path as well. So. so just on that, would you change anything about your journey? Do you feel like you've missed out on anything by not going to uni? Um, I wouldn't even say I've missed out on like the social side because 
you do make friends at work. You, I've got loads of work colleagues that are friends, you know, you go out at Christmas and you have a good laugh at Christmas and you go out for meals and things and you have catch ups and stuff outside of work. Um, I don't think I've really missed out much. It's just, I suppose, a different path with very similar outcomes to it. And university, I'm sure, is a really big pull for some people. Um, but for me, I think it was a, a good idea for me not to go into university. And I still sort of stand by that. And the fact that there are things similar to university degrees like apprenticeships out there, um, I really benefited from that, that route rather than the education route of university. So. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much, Lucy. Hopefully that was um, really beneficial and useful for, for people listening. I think anyone who's at school at the minute that's interested in a digital career um, would have found that useful. And there are so many digital jobs out there. That's what Digital Northampton is about, what we're about here putting these sort of sessions on, is to show people that there are lots of youngsters out there in work. There's lots of opportunities out there. You just need to get out and about and start looking. If you want to visit the digitalnorthampton.com website, we've got a directory on there of lots of businesses that are local. We've got jobs on there from cyber security to gaming to e-learning, creating content for that, digital marketing jobs. There's um, big demand for digital marketing jobs now. So if you want to have a look at that website, you can always contact businesses direct through that to talk to them about opportunities. Uh, we've got some recruitment companies on there who specialize in digital recruitment. They can talk to you about advice for what roles are out there, jobs are out there, pathways in. Um, and then the events that we put on, we've got another event on this Friday. Uh, if you, again, if you look on the website for that, it's all about careers. Uh, it's about education. Uh, the university and the college are going to talk about the courses that they're, talk, um, that they're teaching, the new digital academy that's being built at Northampton College and the skills and courses they'll be teaching there. And then they'll all have a lot of discussion at the end, headed by a lady called Christine Lawrence, who runs the graduate recruitment agency. So she'll be talking about what she sees locally, what the jobs are, what the demand is, and how we can link in um, academia, schools, colleges, the uni to businesses. So um, making sure that there's those job opportunities out there. As soon as people have qualified, they've got the right skills. So there's plenty of opportunities out there. Northampton, Northamptonshire is a place that's really booming for dig digital. So if you're at school, this is a really good place to, um, to look at and, and see what kind of jobs are out there. So that's fantastic. We'll stop recording now. We'll post this video onto our YouTube account. Anyone who signed up today will send the, the link around to that. If there's no further questions, if you've got questions afterwards, do get in touch through the website. We've got an email address on there, Digital Northampton. So thanks again to Lucy for this session and join us for future events. Thank you very much.